Today, we are going to do a brief overview of digestive enzymes. If you guys would like to learn a practical application, what I do personally, definitely sign up for my Patreon down below to see the video I made today, as well as many other exclusive videos. You can also go to my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash franktofano, to see what digestive enzymes I recommend. So enzymes are proteins in our body that perform various functions. All biological reactions within human cells depend on enzymes. They are necessary to sustain life, and as with many molecules in the body, enzymes can be reused. Uh, so again, proteins that act as biological catalysts, they act upon molecules known as substrates, and they convert those substrates into products. One substrate, for example, is sucrose that is contained in high amounts in table sugar. Sucrose is glucose bound to fructose, but when it's bound together, our body can't utilize it. So the sucrase enzyme binds to the sucrose. As you can see, you know, they kind of fit together. You have the active site on the enzyme. When that sucrase enzyme binds to the sucrose, it places stress on the bond, breaking it, and then you end up with the glucose and the fructose separated, and then that sucrase enzyme can go on to break down more sucrose. But the important thing is, glucose can be absorbed directly by the small intestine and the fructose can be processed further in the liver. So the main purpose of enzymes is to break down nutrients into available forms. And the main role is breaking down macronutrients into what our digestive system can absorb and utilize. If you're not absorbing nutrients, you can't repair tissue, perform basic metabolic functions. So even in some circumstances where you are getting enough nutrition in your mouth, your body might not actually be absorbing it. You know, keep in mind, the digestive tract is technically outside of our body. It's kind of like a tunnel that goes through our body. And without these enzymes, we cannot break down the foods we eat. Our body cannot absorb nutrients from food properly without the presence of enzymes. And in the majority of natural foods, the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, how they naturally occur in those foods are not immediately available to be absorbed into the small intestine as direct nutrition. And the primary groups of digestive enzymes are amylases, proteases, and lipases. Amylases breaking down carbohydrates and starches, proteases breaking down protein, and lipases breaking down fats. Now, there are many other substances like alcohol, lactose, gluten, and we spoke about sucrose that each have their own digestive enzyme, and I'm sure there's dozens of other things that have enzymes that I haven't covered today, even just in the context of the digestive system. Uh, but you know, again, this is just going to be a basic overview. You know, we know that when you consume carbohydrates, starches, pasta, bread, your body needs to convert them into glucose and fructose in order to be absorbed. When you consume fats, they need to be converted into fatty acids and glycerol to be absorbed by the small intestine. And when you consume proteins, they need to be converted into amino acids to be absorbed by the small intestine. It's worth noting that certain genetic predisposition gauges your ability to tolerate all of these things, and especially you know things like alcohol and lactose. You know, does your specific ancestry allow you to produce that enzyme needed to utilize the nutrition? You know, why can't Asians eat dairy? Why do Italians do better on wheat? Why do Northern Europeans thrive on milk products? Why are Russians able to drink so much vodka? Has partially to do with enzymes. So I'm sure most of you have heard of amylase, the most commonly discussed enzyme. It's produced in our mouth as well as pancreas to break down starch. What you probably haven't heard is that humans also produce lipase in the mouth and pancreas, which breaks down fat. And it's kind of funny that vegans use the argument that we produce starch digesting enzymes in our mouth to justify being vegan without mentioning that we also produce fat digesting enzymes in our mouths. So as we went over, the starches are broken into glucose and fructose to be readily used by our bodies. The fats, fatty acids, glycerol to be readily used by our bodies. Uh, one thing you guys might be wondering about is bile. Bile is not an enzyme. What it does is it emulsifies the fats, essentially giving the triglycerides a bigger surface area that the lipase enzyme can act upon. Proteases digest proteins, and there's quite a few in comparison to these two because there's really just lipase and amylase. Uh, but for the proteases, you have pepsin, 
chymotrypsin, trypsin, as well as a couple of other ones that are produced in the stomach as well as pancreas. And it's worth noting that the stomach acidity needs to be high enough in order for pepsin to convert proteins into amino acids. So this is where a lot of digestive dysfunction comes in. You know, as you can imagine, most people are following a starch-based diet. So, you know, their primary digestive function is dependent on how well they're producing amylase in their mouth and pancreas. But when you start having gallbladder dysfunction, liver dysfunction, pancreatic dysfunction, and you're not producing the proper enzymes to digest fats and proteins, that's where we run into a bunch of metabolic diseases and disorders. Where do these other enzymes play in? You know, lactase to digest lactose. You know, what about enzymes not produced in the body, like bromelain in pineapple, papain in papaya? Avocados even have lipase in them. You guys probably hear a lot that raw honey has amylase and protease. I mean, well, you might not hear that it has amylase and protease, because the raw tarts just spout, oh, raw honey has enzymes, without actually understanding what amylase and protease is, because they just read one book. Uh, but you have to understand that consuming a raw food that contains enzymes is still a net negative of enzymes, because those enzymes in the food are meant to help digest the food they are contained in. There's an effective difference between eating pineapple versus using a bromelain extract from pineapples. You know, that means marinating meat in pineapple juice and letting the enzyme act upon the meat as opposed to consuming the sugars and material that needs to be processed when you eat a pineapple. And this also has to do with gut bacteria. You know, one reason we get fungal and parasite infections, candida and roundworms and tapeworms, is sometimes due to a lack of digestive enzymes and too much cooked food. The fungus and parasites are raw living organisms that can process the food we eat in a similar way to enzymes. Outside of unnatural things like a candida overgrowth or roundworms and tapeworms being in your digestive tract, just the normal microbiome can help us utilize nutrients from food. You know, someone that doesn't have a lot of lactase might be able to build up a lot of lactobacillus in their gut, which will digest the lactose for them. Uh, so there's definitely a role here between bacteria versus enzymes and a healthy person is going to be producing a certain amount of enzymes and have a certain microbiome. Of course, it does help to have an understanding of digestion in addition to enzymes. As the human body has so many moving parts, we have to gauge what the application for enzymes is. You know, are they needed all the time or in just certain states of health temporarily? Our digestive enzymes and gastric acid are regulated by the endocrine system, our hormones. So hypothetically, if you have an issue with digestion, you want to fix the root problem. You know, why is your body not producing enough enzymes to digest food properly? Hopefully this helps you guys grasp digestion a bit deeper. I may do a future video on the enzymes contained in meat specifically, but as I said, that's more relevant to the food itself being fermented, the food itself being digested, as opposed to aiding your digestion of other foods separately. One of the main reasons to understand these enzymes is if you have gut issues, health issues, as enzymes are usually necessary to add for temporary relief, as in certain states of disease and ill health, digestion can become greatly compromised. Lack of enzymes means you aren't absorbing nutrients, which means you can't give your body what it needs to get better. So as I mentioned earlier, if you guys wanna see what I've done pertaining enzymes to help my iron overload, you know, I had candida, I had SIBO, I had a bunch of problems that I used enzymes to partially remedy. Can you do this without enzymes? Yes, but it's definitely more difficult. You know, unnatural problems tend to call for unnatural solutions. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you guys would like to support me further, uh, you can go down in the description below. I haven't mentioned my book in a while, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, that can be purchased on frank as well as Amazon. And you guys can go check out all the other stuff down in the description. Frankie syringe meat, organ supplements, Frankie's Naturals, frank for one-on-one -on -one diet and fitness consultations. Thanks again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Whoa, what's going on, Frank? Is this OnlyFans or is this Patreon? Guys, if I'm gonna be up at one in the morning filming videos for you guys, I'm gonna do whatever I want. I gotta have a little bit of fun. Uh, so you guys probably watched my enzyme video earlier, and this is where you guys get the good stuff. These digestive enzymes are to be used in a state of disease. And there's also modern factors, especially Wi-Fi. 
you know, high levels of certain frequencies, cell phone, cell towers, microwave, smart meter, whatever it is, they actually impair your liver function, impair your organ function, your pancreatic function. So then you're not going to be producing the digestive enzymes you need. Thank you.